Hello everyone and welcome back to Strategy Gaming Dojo where we find, learn, and play one more turn of the great strategy games. Today back into our PBEM Bonsai Challenge in War Plan Pacific. Uh, we have lost India. Bum, 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 dateline. Do, 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 do. Uh, May 10th, 1942. India has fallen. Uh, we'll get to that in a second and that's what some of this had to do with but those got destroyed as well <laughs> uh you see it here india surrenders uh china's ninth war headquarters was sh shattered uh india's first corps surrendered um it's very interesting and i think it brings up a really nice uh learning point if you want to play the japanese and that is the japanese air power early on uh, can be concentrated and absolutely devastate allied forces uh, if done correctly. Meanwhile, we have a lot of air power as the allies, uh, but it's all stuck on the U.S. West Coast. But we'll get to that in a second. Let's just look down here really quickly. Uh, UK transport times 10. Okay, U.S. landing ships, uh, U.S. landing ships. Okay, 10 and 10. That's good. Then that happened. Uh, that was actually a surprise to me. I certainly thought Indian troops could hold on for one, maybe two turns, but just absolutely wiped out. And we're talking about big uh, cores, the large cores, just getting uh, mauled. Uh, anyway, uh, we lost some Merch Marines. No surprise there to anyone, I don't think. Two, eight. Two, two. We're not going to have much Merch Marines left. We're going to have to build some more uh, at some point. Let's go to the casualties. Uh, the Japanese up to 72, 10, and 20. Eh, okay. Uh, India, 99 and 4. So we've now lost New Zealand and India. Uh, I've never lost two of the three biggies early. Uh, Australia, India, New Zealand. You know, I've lost one. Uh, I've never lost New Zealand, actually. But, you know, I've lost uh, one of India or Australia, but never both. Now, we're holding on in Australia, uh, and we've got more U.S. forces on the, on the way. And now that India has fallen, we've got a very interesting decision to make with British troops. Uh, we'll talk about that in a second. Um, okay. Units, uh, forces, let's look at forces. Uh, you know, we've got a long ways to go. As you can see, 1291 on the ground here. 471 for China, Soviet Union, doesn't matter. UK and US together, just barely over 200. We gotta start ramp, ramp, ramping. Uh, Australians have 74, the, chi the communists have 40. You know, luckily he's gotta split his forces between China and everywhere else, right? So you can kind of think of this as maybe being like 600 and 600. Uh, but still, he's got a massive advantage here early in the game. Uh, we've been building transports and landing craft. we got to turn our uh, attention to building more and more infantry, obviously. The U.S. can crank out a massive amount of infantry once we get going, but we've got to get going. Uh, right, sunk ships. Uh, we still sit here with just the Prince of Wales. This is what you want to see. Just, you know, you don't want to just unnecessarily lose your big ships early on uh, for, you know, what are hopeless causes, essentially. Okay, let's go to the combat log and let's see what happened in India. We run around here, partisan activity, uh, ground strike. And this is what starts to just blow you away, okay? And it's not just the strength points lost. Uh, although that hurts when you lose a couple of strength points. Now, one problem we had is the Indian Air Force, you know, in retrospect, we're thinking big picture here, you just can't lose the Indian Air Force. That way they can sit here in Bombay and at least try to fence back some of this. Uh, but it's not just the strength points. It's the effectiveness and the entrenchment level that could go down. I, You know, I, I haven't quite figured out exactly how the entrenchment level could go down or how much it does because it doesn't show you this here. But I know the effectiveness goes down considerably. And what he'll do is just pound, pound, pound into Bombay until we have a 0% effectiveness or somewhere close to it. Uh, so you see all of these are airstrikes on Bombay. Uh, so he hits Bombay again. Uh, this first score, I say Bombay, it's actually first score is what he's hitting over and over. Uh, and then land combat. So, you know, he's gotten us beaten down. He attacks in here. Now, he lost three, but we lost four. We held that time. Now, you see we've got 
you know, nice entrenchment. We're in the jungle. We're in a city. We've got everything to our advantage, but he's so knocked down our effectiveness with ground strikes. And also, if you're going to play the, play the allies, once we get into 43 and 44, it's something really to keep in mind. Congregating, you know, consolidating all these air assets up here and just boom, 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 over and over. Uh, so then he ground strikes again in here, again, again, again. You know, land combat. He hit us again. We lost four again and held again. But then he hits us one last time. And at that point, we could hold no longer. Uh, we lose 19. We just essentially surrendered. Our effectiveness had gone down to zero from all our close to it, I would imagine. I mean, I don't have the number right in front of me. But it was from these continuous aerial bombardments. And that's how you use the air. Land combat here. He hit us uh, just to the southwest of Changsha. We took one in damage and retreated. Uh, land combat. He hit us uh, again, the same unit, but we held this time. Uh, we held again. We held again. It'll only be a matter of time until he gets air assets down here and tries to do the exact same thing. Uh, he hit us here very hard. We lost two and retreated. Land combat uh, hit us here again. Three and we held the first time around anyway. Uh, and then he hit us there again. We lost one and had to retreat. Uh, long land combat here, He and this is what he was doing. He was threatening here so that he could turn here. And so we're going to have to come up with an answer for that. One and retreated uh, land combat. Then this headquarters that was sitting on top of the hill here just got absolutely shattered. Okay. Uh, not great. Uh, not great. Ground strikes. Now he's hitting Changsha, trying to do the exact same thing that he did in India. Now he's doing it from over here or down here. Now, one thing I'll point out in China, um, when we took Canton, Canton is actually a national supply source. It, it still has 10 production, so he cannot interdict us here. We are in a victory location national supply source. Uh, I love it. Uh, let's actually take that off. Sorry, I didn't mean to leave the logistics on. Ground strike Changsha again. I mean, he's just going to keep hitting this over and over and over and over and over again. Uh, first RAF, that's these guys? Uh, we did a naval airstrike out here with that. Um, okay, well, I'd kind of rather he not do that. Uh, current partisan activities in China... Uh, further in China, more in China. Now up in India, we'll start getting partisan activity out in India uh, now that it's been taken over. Supply interdiction. Uh, this is now interdicted. He destroyed 40. Uh, now, ultimately, we're getting supply straight up from, uh, I'm sorry, from Canberra, Sydney, up this railway to Brisbane, but he's now cut this off by getting next to it. Uh, you know, we can turn on the logistics. You can see here, he's cut the rail right there. Uh, we'll probably want to get a unit up right here and try to hold that. Now, the problem is if we lose any of this along here, um, we don't get any supply into here. And he can interdict into there even more. Convoy attack. All right, we lost one there, one there, one there, one there. I say lost one. We lost merchant marines. We lost two there, uh, two more. Eight. So this is his big carrier task force that he's brought down here by Sydney. Now, why is he doing that? You say, well, why, you know, why go here? You, you know, he's, you've got supply here. You can't interdict this port. That's not the point of what he's doing. He's waiting because if he can take Canberra, then we don't have a national supply source. He interdicts Sydney and Newcastle. Game over uh, in Australia. Uh, convoy attack. He got two more there we'll look at the losses obviously uh china and india took massive losses this time he took a few but nothing that really matters um okay let's take logistics off so that was the combat log we do have units to deploy now the uk actually does not get a new one until june 11th that's because we were not able to get production through to the uk for a very long time uh, and so they're just running behind now we've got uk units that are running around on the map um that we could do something with uh but we've got to start building more uk units us has two brand new divisions that can deploy so let's deploy them uh 
I say that, but actually we may want to put something on a train. Yeah, we'll come back to that. Uh, Soviet Union, all in reserves. We do have a new Chinese unit, and that is extremely helpful uh, to where we are right now. Uh, we really needed this unit. Um, and I could put him up here, or I could put him here. I think that's where we're going to put him. Uh, two very strong units here now. Uh, this unit... Eh, I could keep here. Uh, I'm going to start dropping some of these back. I don't know. We'll, we'll figure it out. We do have a supply truck out here if we need it. Uh, I probably could have used that last time. We do have a new Australian division, uh, which is also extremely helpful. And if we look at the deployment, I mean, it can only deploy here and here. Uh, this is actually quite good uh, if we can put it right in here on this mountaintop. Uh, I guess we could put it over here too. Yeah, we'll have to look at that. I hadn't really thought that through. Uh, Canada building our landing ships. You see, we now have no longer uh, have India. Communist China, we'll have to see if we can build something. So we'll have to come back to deployment because it's all going to kind of matter what we do otherwise on the map. Uh, the war panel, uh, UK lagging way behind on victory points, especially now that it's lost India. That's not good. Uh, the US... Okay, I mean, it's hard to tell what exactly this means uh, this early in the game. You know, are we lagging behind? Uh, I wish there was like maybe a, a suggested or, you know, kind of what would be what you would need to get to a minor victory. Um, you know, like slash, like what, you know, at this stage in the game, uh, maybe something he could add later. Um, yeah, uh, I'm going to wait. I'm going to try to break his codes this time. We've got enough comments. Uh, Soviet Union's way ahead. Uh, advancements. Let's go check this out. UK carrier operations and FIB moves up soon. Uh, the reason we're focusing on carrier operations is eventually the Brits get a lot of carriers. It just takes a long time. Uh, but this is the biggie. Uh, assault troops, that's what you really care about. US uh, 107. We're still in a 1941. That's not great. Uh, carrier operation, 68 uh, days until we get to 1943. By the end of 1942, uh, we start just loading in U.S. carriers. Uh, until that point, you're vastly outnumbered and you're outgunned uh, on the seas. Now, if you can get his main task forces split, um, you know, and he splits it up where he's only got one or two carriers in a task force, you can take it on. But a task force like this that's got six carriers, you're going to get absolutely turned to mincemeat. Uh, believe me, I know. Um, okay, the rest of this is fine. We have no new advancement centers. Uh, the convoys this time, U.S. still trying to go out to U.K. I mean, you know, we're down to... Not very many Merch Marines at this point. We can look at the build queue, but we just don't have a whole lot. We got to try to get everything into the UK. Now, this is from UK to US. Uh, no, uh, it's coming the other way. US to UK. He's trying to get, uh, or I say he, the UK, the AI is, you know, sending some off or getting some in from Canada. I'm sorry. It's the green is in, uh, the red is out. Okay. Uh, the US tried to send that to, through to Australia. I think we've got to take that off this time, and it's just got to go to the UK. Uh, that's where we lost the eight er Merch Marines as it tried to come into Australia. That's just not going to cut it. Um, okay, so that's that. If we look at the build queues, uh, UK has enough to build an infantry division, and we just have got to start cranking these out. So infantry division built. Uh, US has only 163 in the stockpile. Uh, if we look here, we could do an infantry corps small for 144. Uh, I think that's kind of what we have to do. I mean, I want to keep building, you know, I want to build some air force, uh, but we're just not there yet. And we've got to build some more infantry. Um, Soviet Union uh, can't quite build another infantry army, not that it matters, really. 133 now for the Chinese. Uh, Part of that's they're sitting on Canton, getting 10 production out of that. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, we're going to wait. As a matter of fact, I could probably even kick this up a little more. I mean, we're getting a lot of production, and then he'll be able to build another one at 180. Uh, that's awesome. The Aussies uh, didn't get a whole lot through because those Merch Marines got b obliterated, and we're doing a lot of reinforcement and upkeep uh, for the majority 
of their forces, so nothing we can do there. Canadians up to 48. Woohoo! Boy, that's exciting. Uh, and then the communists, you know, it takes 180 for them to build a new unit. So we're not that far away. And then when they do that, we'll click everything over to upkeep. Um, okay, so that's that. Let's start talking about moving forces. All right, so what first? Where do we go here? Uh, it's a great question. Um, we, you know, there's nothing to move in India. Do, do, do. We've got these British troops on transports out here. Now, we have a, <laughs> I say we have a couple of different options. We have some options. We could put them straight through to Australia and, you know, continue to mount our defense of Australia with. Uh, British troops freeing up the Americans to do more, I don't know, you know, up here, maybe take back Moresby, try to get into Ley. If we look at the victory points, uh, Rabal, Ley, uh, Jayapura, sure, that's how the locals say it. Um, you know, those are three victory locations. There's only one in Australia. Uh, we could then, you know, come over with the Americans and try to pressure into Wellington and take back New Zealand. We could come up to Nomaya. Uh, we could even, you know, at some point, we could take the Brits around, try to land in Hong Kong and uh, help out in China. Uh, you never thought we'd be doing that with British troops. Uh, we could land in Singapore. Uh, and do something like that. Now you see he's only got one unit out in Manila, for instance. Uh, we could bring American troops up here. If we can get up in this area, we can cut out a lot of his oil supplies. Now the problem with all of that is um, that he can come interdict these ports. And that becomes a huge problem. <laughs> I mean, a really big problem. Uh, because, you know, in my previous game with him, uh, I did take back uh, part of the Philippines, and he just starved me out up here, uh, and there was no way to get them off. I'm really intrigued by this Hong Kong situation, I have to say, uh, because if the Brits could get up in here and start helping the Chinese, all of a sudden that relieves a lot of the pressure that we have in China. Um, and so what I think I'm going to do with these troops, uh, we've still got them in stealth mode, thank God, um, is I'm going to bring them around here. But it's really unclear to me anyway where I should take them yet. Um, and so I'm going to put them out here kind of in the middle of nowhere or try to have them in the middle of nowhere. Um, now, I they couldn't get all the way to Hong Kong next turn. Uh, but they could land in Singapore or Saigon or try to get up to Bangkok. I mean, we could start trying to take back some of these major locations. I mean, these are two victory locations. Now, again, he can come interdict this because even though uh, their national supply sources, for instance, Singapore, he controls the places he needs to control to not allow that to be a national supply source. Uh, Saigon, I mean, Bangkok's a level eight port, right? Now, another thing to keep in mind is the Brits do not have very many more divisions coming out soon and so maybe the best thing to do is put them with their australian friends and do it that way uh, now that he's won in india i'm sure he's going to come back and cover up some of these spots so with all of that said you know it really comes down to two options hide them here for a turn and try to put them into one of these major locations up here or put them through to Australia. And I honestly think just the best idea is probably to put them through to Australia. It's the uh, safest idea, um, certainly. So let's put them through to Australia. I, I just, it's the safest way to go. We could do this gambit up into you know, Singapore or someplace like that. Uh, but if we do, we're likely to lose those troops eventually, eventually. And I know if you're watching this and you've played the game enough, you would say, well, we're going to have to get aggressive because he's taken enough victory points now that even with our overwhelming force later, it's going to be hard to make up all those victory points. And that's what makes it a, you know, really well-balanced game. Um, but at this point, I think we've just got to be a little careful with it. I don't think that we can push, push, push. You know, it sounds great. Hey, land back and take back Singapore. Well, then he just rolls around uh, and starves us out or starves those troops out. 
and then where are we? Um, you know, we're just down 30 British strength points if we land here. Now, we could have landed here and here, uh, tried to hold them, but this is a level 3 port. It's not connected. He's very smartly set up in Kuala Lumpur, so these two are not connected. Uh, you know, again, could have gone into Singapore. We could have gone into Bangkok, Saigon, uh, but just you know that's really taking a big risk if we would have been here one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty twenty well we could have gotten to saigon next time um and then once we you know disembark in saigon you know, the turn after that, we bring in the other troops and we rail them to Bangkok, hopefully, although he probably would have landed down here immediately interdicted Saigon. So anyway, I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to, you know, look back. Let's let's just do it that way. Um, you know, I'm not saying it's necessarily the best, you know, I, there's arguments to be made on both sides. I'm going to play a little bit more conservatively than I did last time. Um this unit, so now we're down into Australia, this unit's a 1942 assault. This unit's a 1942 assault. I'd like to put these two together and have them right here. This unit, uh, yeah, this unit's a 1941 anti-tank, uh, not nearly as strong. Um, now then, I don't want him to get up and around this way. Uh, also, what do I have out here? A 39 assault. That's not very good. Uh, you don't need me to tell you that. Now, he is doubly dug in, uh, but he's going to start getting absolutely mauled by air power here. Um, so what's the first thing we got to do? Well, I think we move this 42 assault. Uh, well, we can just do it this way. 42 assault into... Oh, I can't combine into him. Okay, let's move him one south let's combine that way okay now he's an eight that looks pretty good to me um and this unit we could either bring up here which is obviously very defensible let's put the logistics back on this is a nine a five a five okay he's an eight here uh but we also need something to protect back here that could be this if we bring in the American forces here. Now, one problem we're going to have is those American forces are going to get it interdicted by his air. Uh, and that's one reason I ran up here to grab Brisbane. So we have another location where they can disembark. Um, oh, boy. <laughs> decisions, decisions. Um, I kind of like taking this hex... So we can't scoot over. But, well, the, one of the reasons is I'm going to bring this and set it right here. Um, 41 anti-tank. It's either here or here I think we need to go. Let's... I think the bigger threat is... Ah, if he comes up around here, he can knock, get the rail though, right? Um, he could bust this rail right here so let's put that unit there all right and we'll move that unit right there uh, now they're not dug in um, we're gonna have to get them dug in I think this unit's probably gonna have to go right here but we'll deal with that in just one second um, we've got 20 and 20 we've got 10 and 10 uh, we need to come here and try to block this off. Either that, or we just get this out of here all together and say, screw it, on uh, Brisbane. Um, if he goes here, we could try to protect the rail, although he could still get out and around us, uh, which is my main concern. So this unit, actually, I am going to bring down here. You can see the rail is cut off. Uh, so we're going to bring him here. Okay. Then we're going to take the 10 of 10. We'll put it in Brisbane. Disembark. And we'll take the 20 and 20 and put it up here as well and try to disembark. Uh, we could try to put it into sit. Now, see, what worries me is this hex right here. Um, if he were to get into this hex, we got a real problem. So let me think about this for a second. Um, 
let's try to get in here to Newcastle. Then we can move this down to here. Uh, now we're going to get interdicted. Let's hope we make it. Oh, thank goodness. All right. Um, okay. So now we're going to move this unit here. Ooh, I kind of wish I would this. I was sitting here with this unit. Now he could have gotten around us, but then he would be totally cut off as well. Um, hmm. Now we could put him on a transport next turn. Again, put him back on a transport out of here if they don't interdict the port. But I would imagine they're going to interdict that port. Um, if I would have gone here, I still don't know if we could hold him off. And I'm just, you know, pleased as punch we got in here. I could have also used landing ships and landed back here. That was a possibility. Uh, but I think we have this about as good as I can get it now. Now, if he lands here, that becomes a real problem. Uh, he would be out of supply, but that would cut... Uh, well, this is the road. The rail is right here. Okay, I think we're okay then. All right. Yeah, let's uh, keep it as is. Now, I brought these units through here. Uh, no, they're going straight back. They're, you know, he's got his main task force right there. Um, they weren't going to be able to attack the subs anyway, but I figured he was going to bring little landing or uh, little patrol boats over here to interdict. Now that's come up in the comments as something he shouldn't be able to do, uh, but you can do it. So um, let's get him out of here. That's going to go back to the West Coast. All right. So we're set up there and we've got the air here. I'm going to take this off of naval, put it on troops. We could also put it on bomb airfields, but that's not really, you know, I want him to be bombing armies now. Uh, I don't want him to tangle out here. He's down to four of 20. We've got to try to build him up a little bit. Now he is naval air training, uh, so he's not a great tactical bomber. Uh, but how, how are we going to work around that or what can we do with that? Let's look at out here first. Just make sure, okay, Canton, we didn't get pressured there this time. Uh, Midway, no, we've still got Dutch Harbor. Not that that matters, really. Uh, we've got our entire fleet out here at Pearl Harbor. We've got nothing down here. All right. Uh, and back up here near San Francisco. Now we need to get some air out there. We've got close support, 39 close support. We've got 39 close support. We've got strategic bombers. I mean, we don't have a whole lot here, uh, certainly. Uh, but let's take the one that's the best at air-to-air -air combat. So five, and he's a five. Okay, so five and five. This is 39 close support, just not good, uh, and 39 close support. But that's what we've got to work with. Um, we landed this time, so we can't send them through. But we can send another division through which is what we're going to do. Now you can see we've got specialty points here. So let's put him on a transport um, out of Morrow Bay and off you go. Okay. And now we're going to deploy American troops, 41st division. Uh, we'll go in, well, shoot, let's do it this way then. Let's uh, move him up to Morrow Bay. And then we'll deploy into Los Angeles, uh, 41st Division. There we go. And I guess we could either put him in Portland or 32nd Division. It doesn't really matter. Let's put him right there. We've got our comment uh, we could use, but we're not going to use. Uh, so we're going to save Australia. I'm not convinced that's the best move, but... Uh, that's what we're going to do. Uh, we do have this Australian unit that we can set up somewhere. So let's put him, uh, here. I wanted to move here anyway. Um, sure. Let's put him down right there. Not the strongest unit in the world, but 
Now we're starting to ring Canberra, and we've got American troops on here. Again, you know, I feel like I can take a transport down here next turn unless we get interdicted. If not, he can try to move down here. I mean, if we look at the logistics, now he may try to block us, but we could go out and around. The logistics right now run to here. Now he's probably going to try to run on this uh, rail line here, but this, from this rail line, extends here we got to make sure he doesn't get on this rail line uh, because it is a drop back spot uh, for something out of brisbane but i like leaving that at brisbane right now anyway um okay I, I don't think there's a whole lot more we can do there we don't have let's look at the brits again i mean they do have another transport we could get this headquarters out and put it down uh, you know in australia but i don't want to leave this just open so i'm going to leave him there um U.S. We're using all 40 transports. They are going to get more transports next turn, May 12th, then May 27th, so up to 60, then up to 80 on June 5th. Uh, then we don't get, you know, it's a while before we get more. Uh, but by June 5th, we'll have 80 transports. That's not, that's actually about as good as we can do, I think. I mean, I've been building them as fast as we can build them. Uh, but now maybe the time for building transports is over. We've got to start uh, building more and more units, especially air units this next time. Uh, we got to get some fighter bombers up and ready to go. All right, nothing more to do out here. We've dealt with Australia. Uh, sitting here in Canton, this just cracks me up. We now have a national supply source. Uh, we could try to pressure here. As you can see, we only get one to two odds there. Uh, we can't really move there. I mean, we're best just to stay right here where we sit. Uh, one to one there. We could move something of this up and around and over, uh, but I am going to move this unit up the road. Uh, we're just not getting pressured out here at all so far. Um, now then, you know, with something like this unit, I, you know, he's going to be coming hell's fury this way now to pressure us at Kunming and otherwise. Uh, you know, one unit's not going to take Rangoon. We could come through the center of the country and try to make it all the way to Bangkok. I don't think that makes any sense whatsoever. We've got no transports with the Chinese, obviously, so we can't go around. Um, as it is, I think we'll probably just kind of sit like this. I do think I'll move this headquarters unit up. Uh, I'm just going to let him sit in Canton, and the longer he can hold this, now eventually he's going to get surrounded, but we're taking some, at least some, of his, uh, you know, uh, advancement away from him there. Now let's move this unit up, and now we've got two to one odds. Let's try to do something here uh, and knock him back. Okay, we took one. All right, he holds again. We've got one more shot at this, but it's really this unit. Hey, we actually knocked somebody back finally. Uh, okay, uh, these guys got worn down a little bit, but that's fine. We scooted him back and out of here. Uh, these guys are getting really ragtag. You know, in some respects, you may be better off uh, holding off on such attacks. His effectiveness is down to 10%. 32% here, at least he's doubly dug in. Uh, the, you know, this unit in Changsha is in big, big trouble. We could try to get him out and, you know, leave Changsha, uh, but usually I just set this up and say, okay, you know, let, let's try to hold as long as we can. He's 30 of 30, he'll eventually shatter, uh, but he, we're not there yet. Um, this headquarters, I will move back. Uh, can't, don't want to move him back too far. Okay, we've still got everybody in command. Yep, there we go. Okay, we've got still got everybody in command, uh, but I'll just move this unit up. Um, let's look at the logistics out here. Fours, we've only got a one there. Uh, this is that cavalry unit. I think what I'll do is bring the cavalry around this way and just back this guy up a little bit. Um... It's a stronger unit. So for now, let's bring him there. Let's back this unit up. Okay. Uh, this unit is doubly dug in, so I hate to give that up. I think I'll just leave him there for now. Um, I guess this headquarters can go a little further if I really wanted him to. Uh, 
Eh, let's just leave them right there. So now I've got a four of five and a four and zero. I think what I really want to do this four or five, he's up to 29 of 30. This was only a 12 of 30. I could put the headquarters in there um, and move this down here, I guess. Or I could wait and move him in there. Uh, hmm. Got to keep one headquarters, you know, up and around these guys, but it's, you know, one, two, three, four. He can only go back one more hex, but this isn't the hex under any kind of stress this time. Um, let's go to the north first. All right, this unit can come up and around to protect Lan Chao, uh, which is what I said, you know, eventually would happen or should happen. Uh, we could come out here and try to cut his rail behind these forces, probably the smart thing to do. Uh, we're still in a little bit of a supply there, uh, so let's do that. And then this unit, uh, the headquarters unit, can start kind of moving this way, but we protect in and through here. Now he can back up, okay? He can back down across the river, but do would I rather he go here or here? I guess here, and then this unit here, this unit here. We'll try to get these guys dug in to the extent we can. Um, He'll go here. Okay. Uh, <laughs> the poor headquarters. Well, that's fine. He can try to hold these guys off for a turn. Um, all right. And we're bringing this up here. So eventually, you know, we can try to hold on at Cheng 2. But this is really where you got to hold them. Uh, up here, there's no river. So if he comes through to the north, we got to try to throw as much up here as we can. We can also, like I said, his supply situation will get very bad out here. Uh, we can use the communists to try to cut this rail line where he would be pushing his supply. If it's not through there, uh, he doesn't have any other place to get supply. It's very hard to get through up here. Um, this is the better way for him to do it. But again, this is down a road. Now, he does have supply out of Cyan, but we could try to sneak around behind here and do something there uh, to thwart him a bit. Now, we're probably going to get shattered there, and then we just start you know, moving back, trying to get back behind the river uh, and hold on. We could pull these guys back uh, a little bit here uh, and get them ready to get back behind the river, uh, but I don't want to leave him all on his own. We're still okay here. Not great, but okay. Uh, is there anything left to deploy? I know I was putting some of that off. Comment, uh, comment, Soviet Union, no. We put the Chinese unit down. Australia, we will be getting another one, not next turn, but the turn after. Uh, Canada, Communist China, okay. Build queue, 18 on the Brits, 19 on the US in the stockpile. Uh, doesn't matter there. Uh, next time, Chinese. Uh, Australia is trying to get their upkeep up. Uh, Canada, okay and communist china okay i think that does it uh for this time so anyway we're uh, i guess we could go look at the warnings really quickly but it's just going to show us things in india and then this is now uh doesn't have a supply store. oh the specialty points damn it i knew i was forgetting something uh you see the uk is up to 75 us up to 101 um as many of you know i like to put the anti-air on my carriers uh but this time I'm actually going to take this unit, take off the logistics, and I'm going to make this an elite unit. Infantry Corps small, plus three anti-tank, experience. Do I make an elite? Eh. I mean, he's only got 50% experience. I'd take him to a 60. He'd probably make that a 7. Um, hmm. How close are the Australians? They've only got 53. Canadians don't matter. Communist Chinese. Oh, the Chinese are up to 77. Uh, let's stick with what I usually do, which is to put this on my carriers. Um, and so we've got the Yorktown here. Yorktown, Lexington. Do any of these look better than the others? Not really. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, so I think what we'll do is we'll just put it on the Yorktown. Why not? Uh, screen, four times, anti-error. Let's add it. Okay, perfect. Uh, thank you guys so much for joining me. I will talk to you next time. Have a good one. Strategy Gaming Dojo out.